I'll be talking about something I call multi-cut mimicking networks. I'll show they also exist across a polynomial size and they can almost be computed in polynomial time. Uh, so the setup, we're assuming we have a large graph G, I see a very large graph, and a small number of terminals. And we will let K denote the total capacity of the terminals, which means basically the total number of edges of the incidental terminals. And we are interested in behavior of this graph with respect to all partitions of the terminal set. So one natural partition, which is corresponds to probably called multi-way cut, is if our four terminals should be shattered into four different connected components, then the solution would be some set of edges that cross these wavy lines, and that number would be one of the numbers that we are interested in. Another partition, of course, if you have a slightly less demanding partition requirement, you're only required to isolate T2 and T3 from the rest, but T1 and T4 are allowed to be connected. Or, you know, even, even less demanding, we only require to isolate one terminal, T1, from the other three terminals. So, in, so, there, so there is an exponential number of such possible partitions you could be asked in, in the future to implement. And we want to preserve for every such possible partition request the minimum number of edges that you have to cut in the graph to realize this partition. And what we want to do, in ideally speaking polynomial time, we want to replace our very large graph G by a smaller graph containing the same terminal set T and also some other vertices, such as for every partition request on G and G prime, the size of the smallest realizing partition cut uh, is, is the same in both. As to put it in writing, we have a graph G as the terminals T and the partition of T. A cut for the partition is a set of edges that hits all paths between distinct parts of the partition. And the multi-cut mimicking network is a graph G prime containing T such for every partition of the terminal set, the size of a, of a cut is the same. Uh, the special case when you're partitioning your terminal set into blocks of size 1, this is called the multi-way cut. This is the underlying problem we're most interested in solving. But we're kind of forced to consider all other partitions as well on the way. Uh, might also note that if you have more than two blocks, then it will be in gen general and be hard to compute the exact number of edges. So we're not going to so we're not going to be solving each of these problems right now. We're merely going to be using some reduction reduction rules that will shrink the size of a graph without destroying any optimal solution for any partition. Uh, one quick parenthesis here. I, call, I use the phrase multi-cut mimicking network, but I define it in terms of partitions of the terminal set. It's not hard to see that in what, even what's normally considered multi-cut is also preserved by this. So how much, how might you otherwise have defined a multi-cut mimicking network? You might say for any set of cut requests on the terminal set, I want to preserve the number of edges required to simultaneously kill all connections in R. So in this picture, four terminals, two cut requests. It's not hard to realize that the solution to this problem will be some kind of partitioning of the terminal set, for example, into these pieces. And if you have preserved the minimum number of edges for this partitioning, you will also have preserved the size of an optimal multi-cut solution. So we are allowed to kind of be justified in using the phrase multi-cut mimicking, even though for the rest of the talk we'll purely be working with partitions of the terminal set and we'll let we'll even talk about cut requests. Our results in terms of the total capacity K, the, the main result is an existence result. There always exists a multi-cut mimicking network with K to the order log K edges. 
And if the problem called small set expansion has an approximation algorithm with approximation rate just slightly better than current state of the art, then some kind of a quasi polynomial size multi cut mimic network can be computed in polynomial time. So we will be describing an algorithm that's constructive and almost polynomial. The only part that is not polynomial will be a sub call to some sparse, small, small set expansion algorithm. Very quick note. The best known upper bound on this approximation area is exactly log n, which is, as you see, is just just above the threshold where it's useful to us. The, there is a conjecture lower bound, which says you probably can't do constant factor, but nobody has ever conjectured, and there is no way to exclude that there could exist, for example, square root log n or log k as, as approximation ratios. Uh, the reason we're looking at this multi cut mimic network question is because this question arises when studying something we call kernelization. Um, I, don't, I, I don't even want to fully define what kernelization is. It's something that's of great interest in Parametria's complexity. You're reducing an input problem in polynomial time without solving it, and you're encoding the original instance into some bounded size. So a, there is a list here on the screen of problems that if this works, if such an approximation algorithm exists, then these problems would all have kernels of quasi polynomial size. At the moment, the only, the only known bounds in general for all of these is exponential size. So even existence of, the, of quasi polynomial kernels seems to me to be a great step forward in terms of asking whether they have polynomial kernels or not. Um, to orient ourselves just a little bit in, in the literature terms, that's what we're talking about. Uh, we can relax the uh, multi-cut mimic network question to a more natural one to say I'm not interested in all partitions of the terminal set. I'm only interested in normal graph cuts with two, par two parts. Previous work, 2012, joint work with Stefan Crutch. We showed that you can always get there in polynomial time with k cubed edges, and you can actually, this is a just a contract, contraction implementation of the original graph. Uh, there are two variant notions which have possibly been more studied in the literature that may or may not be more interesting. The first is to drop our parameter k and instead only ask about how does the size depend on the number of terminals alone. Uh, we, well, then it's known you need at least exponential size in terms of number terminals. So our methods don't apply to that question. The other variant which has been studied is to ask for even tighter, like much tighter size requirements on a, on a replacement network and instead relax to allow approximate implementation of the cut sizes at some, some bounded approximation uh, function. Uh, so compared to these uh, lines of previous work, our question is easier because the parameter k is more permissive than either of the others, but it's arguably harder because we don't allow approximation and we also don't allow exponential uh, running time. Uh, one more note, this same result for 2012 also works if you have a partition into at most s pieces and then you get the size of k to the power of s plus 1. So for any constant number of different pieces or any constant number of terminals, you get the polynomial uh, mimicking network, multi cut mimicking network. Uh, but if you want the number of pieces to be arbitrary, then previous work doesn't do anything. So we'll look at the tools. The machining behind the previous result uh, for 2012 and also the machinery uh, behind what's running now is something called the representative sets. This is a statement from uh, well, basically from matrix theory or linear algebra. 
uh, Van Lovas in 1977, adapted by Marx in 2006. Um, it's a conceptually unusual way of working, the way we, the way we have been using it for uh, sparsification questions. Uh, so you can think about it conceptually the same way you would think about, say, first order logic formulations of problems. You can solve a problem by writing down a finite size first order logic formula that defines the pro problem properties, and then you have a bunch of big hammers that let you solve the problem on certain graphs using the formula. So we have a similar set up here where we, we define some kind of a query structure Q, which we'll talk about in a second, which takes two parameters, a set of elements X and a single edge E from the edge set of the graph. The interpretation of uh, QXE is the set X does not block the edge E. Um, and what the representative set lemma says is that if you have such a structure in the right format, some linear representation, you, you feed the lemma the representation of Q and the representation of your edge set E, and it produces a subset of edges of whose size depends on the structure of Q. And the guarantee is that for any set X that you give this given to you in the future, if there exists any edge which, X, which is not blocked by X in the original set edge set E, then one such edge exists in S. So the set of edges S represents the full set of edges E with respect to the query structure Q. And what we are especially interested in, meaning how, how is this useful, Let's call, let's call it an isolating query via set x sub e such that x sub e blocks every edge in the graph except one special edge e. If such a set x sub e exists, then we have a guarantee that the output that represents the set lemma will contain e. And in particular, if we are able to show that for every partition of a terminal set, and for every optimal solution or some optimal solution for, for every partition, there exists an isolating query for every edge of such an optimal solution, then this lemma would just be forced to give us a set of edges that contains the optimal solution. So this is kind of backward structure. You're not really working combinatorially with the graph, just proving the existence of some uh, queries x e. So to give a little bit more detail, I don't want to dive too deeply here, but to give some idea what it looks like, the structure of Q as we're using it is it's built out of layers. So each layer of Q will be a vector space Fi. So the elements, the edges of E are mapped to vectors of Fi. The query set is split into one set of vectors in our vector space. And the interpretation of X blocking E is that in at least one layer, the span of XI contains E. So, so E is not blocked by X if the union of spans of XI does not contain E. Under this setup, the guarantee on the size of the output set S is the product of the ranks of the vector spaces. Um, so the, use, the important question here is what are the useful layer types? Um, the most interesting one is something called a gamoid, which is basically a way to encode graph cuts into vector spaces. Um, we will use it to block out connected components or solutions. And the other type is a kind of mop-up layer we're using to block out any Const any bounded number of objects up to the rank R is where it has no special structure other than being able to contain any set of Carnaby R. So let's look at um, the previous work, the K to the S plus 1 kernel. 
So we, are, so we assume we have four terminals or, or a partition into four parts and we want to construct Q and XE to isolate one edge of the, uh, of the solution. Uh, we'll do so in five layers. The first layer is a gamoid, and although I haven't said exactly what a gamoid is, I just promise to you that if this is the unique so optimal solution for this question, then there exists a set X1 whose closure contains exactly all edges within the connected component V1. Same thing V2, V3, V4. In four separate gamoid layers, we give small sets of, of vectors xi whose closure blocks out precisely all edges in the connected component vi and no other edge. So now, after these four layers, the exact edges which are not blocked out by x are the, the edges of the solution. And to complete the picture, we add one more uniform layer of, of rank K containing all edges of the actual cut except one special edge E, which is the one which we will look for. So this is the query X sub E inside this query structure, Q with five layers, proves that the, proves that the output of the says lemma must contain every edge of the solution. So the size is k to the 5, because you have 5 layers of, of rank k each. And um, I, I, I'm cutting some corners, but more or less speaking, this is what happens. So, how, how do we adapt this to work with more than constant number of partitions? So imagine that this were a picture with an unbounded number of different parts, uh, S. We have some uh, cut X, which, you know, which implements this partition. And the connected components will, as before, be called VI, VI being the connected component that contains the terminal set TI. Uh, we have seen two different methods for blocking out edges inside VI. So we, would, so we will be interested, as before, in blocking out edges of connected components VI without blocking out any edge of uh, the actual cut X. Um, the first case is if the number of edges leaving VI is large enough, we can afford to use a gamoid, gamoid layer to block V1, VI, and this is because there's at most a constant number of layers which contain a constant fraction of all allowed edges. The other case, which is very simple, is if the size of VI in total is small, we can just make the uniform layer bigger and throw all edges from VI and all edges from all other small components into one single uniform layer. Um, and the obvious third case being the case we can't handle is a large, comp large component with a small number of edges in the cut. And this is the first improvement to a previous work, although it's very natural. Is this is exactly the situation where you would imagine you should be able to recursive, recursively replace uh, the, this vertex at VI by a smaller network which behaves the same way with respect to uh, multi uh, There's quite some details in getting this to work, but this is indeed the idea. Uh, so in some high-level outline, what, uh, what the algorithm we're working with is... So we will have a tweakable parameter C, which has to be at least log K, and we describe a procedure which will mark K to the C edges. And the first phase is to, to ask, is there any set of the graph which is very weakly connected to the rest? Specifically, if there is a set of edges whose coronality 
Yeah, set the vertices, sorry, it's set the vertices S whose cardinality is more than its interface cut to the power of C, then by well by induction we are allowed to replace G induce S by a smaller graph that behaves the same way. And of course, for every partition of our terminal set T, the solution for that partition will have some kind of a partition, possibly a trivial one of the edges incident to S. And if the replacement network for S behaves the same way as the original uh, graph part S, then the replacement is equivalent to the original. Second step, assuming that G contains no sparse cut of this type, then we're, we're allowed to run a marking procedure, uh, which I will describe in the next couple of slides. Its correctness guarantee depends on uh, the graph being uh, at least dense enough that step two is reached. We will run C different sweeps, and in each sweep we have a different represented set construction. Afterwards, if there is any edge which was not marked in any of the sweeps, we can contract that one edge and start over from step one until we have our mimicking network. So looking at the actual marking, uh, we just assume that, the, that step one does not apply. We assume that the graph is densely connected. So we look at the, the sizes of the comp connected components of G minus X. We'll sort them by size, just for illustration. And we remember that we have a guarantee that the number of edges leaving every component is lower bounded uh, by the number of vertices it contains. That's a density requirement. And we look, and we will look at, we have a budget of marking K to the C minus one edges in every, in every sweep. So in every sweep will be a representative set uh, with the rank guaranteeing k to the c minus 1. So the first and most extreme in one direction thing we do is we construct the query q which is one layer which is a gamoid of rank k and one layer which is a uniform matroid of rank k to the c minus 2. Uh, the size guarantee for the output is k to the c minus 1 and is marked. By the same argument I sketched a minute ago, this sweep will, will mark all edges of any solution where the largest connected component contains, let's say, almost all the edges of the graph except k to the c minus 2 uh, further edges. The second sweep, we use two gamma layers and a slightly smaller uniform layer, rank k to the c minus 3. If you, if you compute the size guarantee, it again marks k to the c minus 1 edges, and this sweep will mark every solution containing two arbitrarily large components, and components 3, 4, and upwards are in total size most k to the c minus 3. We do this all the way down until we have a single uniform, until we have uniform layer of rank order k, and C, C minus two gamma layers, so as many layers as we can afford. And this will again succeed if component number C minus one and onwards is small. And in total, we mark C times K to the C minus one, which is at most K to the C edges. So just a very quick word about why should this work? We have a size guarantee that if all sweeps fail, then this number of edges is in the tail is at least k to the c minus i for every sweep i. We have a density guarantee that says the number of edges leaving every component is the number of vertices to one over c. And we have a cardinality guarantee that says if you sum up the endpoints of all edges, you're bounded by well, either 2k or 3k. And without going to the mathematical details, worst case situation, the number of endpoints in the contribution turns out to be a well, the magical step here is just that this is a geometric sum with a ratio 
uh, which flips when, when c is at least log k. So when c, when there are at least log k layers, the contributions start paying off. Uh, I'll just leave on the slide this, uh, two quick questions. The first question is, what about vertex deletion? The second question is, what about the notion called flow sparsifiers? Uh, thank you for the attention.